God from all eternity did, by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will, freely and unchangeably ordain whatsoever comes to pass. Understand this, when you go to give someone the gospel, because it's the truth, they can't believe it. Did you get that? Because it's the truth, they can't receive it. Because they are pre-programmed to believe lies. We'll never be able to divest God of the responsibility for the existence of evil. He allowed it and designed it into this universe. How foolish and frail is the support of divine justice afforded by the suggestion that evils come to be. Not by his will, but by his permission. It is a quite frivolous refuge to say that God otiously permits them when scripture shows him not only willing, but the author of them. Who does not tremble at these judgments with which God works in the hearts of even the wicked, whatever he will, rewarding them nonetheless according to desert. Again, it is quite clear from the evidence of scripture that God works in the hearts of men to incline their wills just as he will, whether to good for his mercy's sake or to evil according to their merits. God brings about all things in accordance with his will. In other words, it isn't just that God manages to turn the evil aspects of our world to good for those who love him. It is rather that he himself brings about these evil aspects for his glory and his people's good. This includes as incredible and as unacceptable as it may currently seem God's having even brought about the Nazis' brutality at Birkenau and Auschwitz, as well as the terrible killings of Dennis Rader and even the sexual abuse of a young child. And what this means for God's people is that God ordains even what is really evil for his children's good. When a child is is God responsible and did he decree that Yes, because if not, then it's meaningless and purposeless. I like to explain it this way. If there's one molecule in the universe running loose outside of the control of God's sovereignty, what I like to call the one maverick molecule, then the practical implications for us as Christians is that we have no guarantee whatsoever that any future promise that God has made to his people will come, will come to pass. If there is sin in this world, and there's a devil in this world, you know absolutely that God ordained that there be a, a devil, and that God ordained that human beings would sin. God works all things after the counsel of his will even keeping those kings who want to commit adultery from committing so. And when he wants to, he orders those to commit adultery when he wants to. Evil is not good, but it is good that there is evil. That his determinate counsel extends itself even to the first fall and all other sinful actions of both angels and men, and that not by a bare permission. If God acted as the primary cause and humans only as a secondary cause, moved by the primary cause, then God being the primary cause is responsible and people are not free, and therefore God decided, and God compelled, and God coerced, and God actually overturned human will, then God is responsible for all the evil, and all the divine judgment, and the determination of eternal punishment. This is a God that some people just can't Yet so, as thereby neither is God the author of sin, nor is violence offered to the will of the creatures, nor is the liberty or contingency of second causes taken away, but rather established 